Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Schuberth S3 helmet. This is the third of Schuberth's new generation of helmets. It's the S3 Sports Touring helmet. It follows the C5 flip front and the E2 Adventure Flip to become the third Schuberth that passes the new ECE 2206 safety standard. If you've fancied a C5 or an E2 but you don't want a flip front, then it's worth sticking with us here as this has many hallmarks of those two helmets. The S3's shell is made from the same mix of glass and carbon fibres as the main shell on the C5 and the E2, but all of this shell is made from that material where the chin bar section on those other two helmets is made from plastic. This size medium S3 weighs in on our scales at 1,682 grams. Now that's not exactly light in terms of sports helmets, but I didn't find the weight to be a problem when I was riding in this lid. And another factor to bear in mind on that score is that there's effectively half an intercom already installed in the S3, which is something I'll come back to a bit later on. The ventilation comes through three inlets on this helmet and it's excellent. The rocking vent closure just under the center of the visor directs air through to the eye port and the sliding switch underneath it brings air through to the mouth, which is filtered by a mesh insert that can be taken out to clean it or replace it. The top vent has three stages, closed, open, or half open. This draws air in, which can then circulate through channels in the EPS impact liner and exit at the back of the helmet. This venting setup is a near direct copy of what's on the C5, and that's a very good thing. I can't think of a better helmet in terms of ventilation than either the C5 or the S3. They're on a par with each other. If anyone is going to criticise the venting, it's because the airflow will come through too strongly for them. And for those people, it's worth tweaking the switches to be partially open rather than fully open. And they can also fold out a flap on the top pad within the comfort lining. And that flap will then cover those vent inlets and reduce the cooling effect a bit. The visor for this helmet is exactly the same as the one that's used on the C5. It's dead easy to change. There's a link in the description for this video that will take you to our guide on how to change it. There are five intermediate stages between open and closed, and the lowest of those puts the visor in the city or cracked position. This leaves a 10 millimeter gap between the visor lip and the seal, which I found ideal for letting in some air when I was riding at lower speed. There's a Pinlock 120 insert, which is the highest grade of mist protection, and it covers virtually all of the eye port to give excellent peripheral vision. And it's pre-installed by Schuberth as well, so that's one less thing for us to worry about as riders. You have to hope that installer got it right in the first place though. If you need to alter the tension, the only way to do it is to press the pins out and then push them back through the visor in a different position. So I had mist patches when I wore this S3 in the rain and I found the pin lock was loosely sealed around the bottom. Thankfully for me, just taking the insert out and refitting it did improve that seal. And I say thankfully because pushing those pins out and refitting them is not a fun job. The S3 has a very effective seal against rain and wind and that makes for a well insulated and quiet helmet. You might though find a downside to that if you ride in bad weather a lot. I took this helmet out for a ride in constant rain and I found that heavy condensation formed around the edge of the pinlock. After an hour, the moisture from that was creeping over the pinlock seal and getting onto the surface of the insert. So if you intend to ride in persistent rain, then I would keep a microfiber cloth handy and be prepared to stop after an hour and a half or so perhaps just to dry out the inside of the visor. There's a sun visor on this helmet, which has a good level of drop. If it's a bit too much for you, sliding a tab into the switch channel reduces that drop by about five millimeters. There's no anti-fog coating on the sun visor, so you'll need to open the visor vent just here and hope that brings in enough air to clear it. If it doesn't, you'll have to open the visor to the city position to let that air flow through. Okay, let's look inside the helmet where the S3 again has a lot in common with the C5 and the E2. The comfort lining for this helmet is made up of eight parts, as well as a pair of cheek pads. The skull padding comes in five pieces. That's front, back, top, and two sides. Then there's an additional chunk of neck roll to fill the gap between the cheek pads and also a wind deflector that attaches with Velcro. Schuberth's individual fit program means you can buy pad kits to change the internal shape of the S3 a little bit. As we record this though, that only applies to riders who take sizes from medium up to extra large. The round kit gives you a thicker back pad and thinner side pads that makes it suit a broader, shorter head. And the long kit gives a thinner back pad and thicker side pads, so it becomes a better fit for a longer, narrower head. Those kits aren't available in the UK yet, but I'd expect them to cost around £40 once they do arrive. You can also change the cheek pads. Standard thickness is either 25 or 30 millimeters, depending on the helmet size. Optional extra pads bring that either down to 20 millimeters for a looser fit or increase it to 35 millimeters if you need a tighter fit. Again, those cheek pads aren't available in the UK as we record this. I'd expect them to be somewhere around 70 pounds a pair when they land. 
The cheek pads have emergency release tabs, so medics can pull those out to make it easier for them to take a helmet off. And while we're showing you our pictures with the lining out, they show the extra straps that come with the shoe berth. They connect the quick release chin strap to the back of the helmet, which makes a helmet less likely to roll forward and come off your head in an accident. While we're showing those shots, you can also see the intercom parts that I mentioned at the beginning. The speakers and antenna are already in place with this helmet, so fitting a Shubert SC2 intercom is very easy. The battery from that unit goes in the port at the back, the control module clips to the side, and then a microphone plugs in to give you sleek integrated comms. The SC2 is made by Senna for Shubeth and it's £330 per unit as we record this. It's a high-spec unit that uses mesh and Bluetooth for comms and it's popular with riders who've bought one. Fitting an off-the-shelf intercom will be trickier, but I don't think it's impossible. The integrated speakers can be taken out and unplugged and the control unit for a regular intercom should stick over the clip just here if you use a self-adhesive mount. Okay, let's cover sizing approvals and pricing. The S3 comes in sizes from extra small up to triple XL. There are two shell sizes. Helmets up to and including large go in the smaller shell and then XL and above go in the bigger shell. There are different thicknesses of EPS impact liner as well, so Shubeth aren't just using thicker comfort foam to pad out the smaller helmet sizes within those shell sizes. The S3 is approved to EC2206 for the road. It's not been tested by the UK government's sharp impact testing program as we record this, but if a rating is released, then we'll add that info to the description below. The S3 is not ACU gold rated, so you'll need something different if you want to do track days and go racing. Okay, pricing. The S3 is £429.99 in plain white or plain black. This concrete grey colour is £15 extra at £444.99. The graphics come in at £499.99 and all of those prices are correct as we record this. Okay, my take on the S3. Set aside the possible issue of condensation on the inside of the visor and I think this is a very, very good helmet. I found the comfort to be good, noise levels to be low, and the peripheral vision to be excellent. Ventilation is outstanding as well, and that sun visor offers good protection when the weather's good. For people who ride every day of the year, regardless of the weather, I have to say there is a question mark. That condensation issue and also the lack of anti-fog coating on the sun visor means I would personally think twice about having an S3 as an all-weather daily rider. In any other circumstances though, I think this is a very, very impressive lid, especially if you're a summer rider, as that ventilation is truly superb. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Shubeth S3, but if there isn't a thing you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.